Hey there, guys. It's your boy Donnelly coming back at you on a Friday night. Yep, this time I am avoiding those crowds and bars and restaurants, and I am in a safe place working on some JavaScript. Now, I'm beginning to wonder, it's like, is even taking a college class on this stuff even worth it? Because for one, I've pretty much been having to self-teach myself this JavaScript. And I guess I'm pretty used to that because, I mean, I did self-teach myself Python and SQL for most of 2020 into early 2021. So I guess it's not gonna be much different in terms of JavaScript. And I kind of get a laugh, and especially with one of my classes, it seems like all they've done is they've just gathered a bunch of YouTube videos and tutorials off the web and then just made it into a class. I mean, it's just like, I guess I could create my own class on programming, collect a bunch of YouTube videos on how to like work with arrays and then be like, yes, I am teaching this course, but yet the people that are making the YouTube videos or the tutorials are the actual people teaching the class. I have yet to actually take a college course on programming where they actually do a good job of teaching. I actually learn probably the best programming from YouTube videos. I kid you not. YouTube videos, DataQuest, DataCamp, Udemy. Yeah, so aside from that, let's get to what I am working on right now. So what I decided to do is, of course, my goal is to get a job as a data analyst or business analyst. And let's face it, you're going to be working with a lot of uh, dirty data sets. So I decided to kind of create this makeshift uh, data set, which is uh, utilizing the object feature of JavaScript. I want to say it's similar to dictionaries and Python, where you have like these key value pairs. The text that's in red would be the key, and then what's in green would be the value. And so I've kind of created this uh, object here. And so let's say I want to figure out what the average student loan debt is. And so obviously I would be dealing with thousands and thousands of records with probably several uh, columns. But to keep this you know, nice and simple, I just created uh, a simple key value pair uh, with the person's name and uh, the loan debt amount. And so my goal is I want to figure out what the average uh, debt is. And as you can see here, I've got some negative values and I've got some unwanted characters here. So let's go ahead and get started as to how I'm going to find what the average student loan debt. And feel free to share in the comments, especially you experienced coders out there, and how you would uh, use a lot less lines of code, maybe increase like the... Uh, the running, uh, decrease the running time of this program. Like I know you got like the big O notation and efficiency in terms of like using algorithms for efficiency and, and so forth. So feel free to share your thoughts, but this is how I did it. So the first thing I did is of course my object, um, my objective is to get the average uh, debt amount. So I decided to turn this into a, an array. So the first thing I did here is I used the object entries function and I passed in uh, my object student loan amount. And so what hap happened here is I pretty much came up with an array which just has, you know, two, uh, you could say it's got two columns, index zero and index one. So like each of these are like different arrays. So actually what happened here is all these values become like their own array each with uh, two values, one at index zero and one at index one. And I'll get into that in just a little bit, what I mean by like at index zero, one, two, three, and so forth. And so as a matter of fact, I'm gonna do that right now. So I decided to create another array here, just a simple one. And so when it comes to programming, you would think that this would be at index one, two, three, but no, it actually starts off at zero. So this would be at index zero, then one, two, three, and four. And so let's say I want to find out what value is in the fourth position. Well, you just think of it this way. Okay, fourth position minus one is three. So I'm gonna be like, okay, so I'm gonna use my R and then I wanna find out what's in the fourth position. That's gonna be index three. And then when I come here, up here, I can see, if I scroll up here, 
it's actually the value of 5. Okay, so we got that out of the way. So now, okay, so, okay, great. So I've got these series of arrays, but I want to just get these values only. So now what I did here is I created an empty array and I named it my first clean array. So basically it's like the first step in the cleaning process of making sure I have clean data so I can come up with a good app, you know, a clean, accurate average. So what I did here is I had to do a little bit of a for loop. And so what I'm doing here is I am just simply taking the value that's at index one. So basically I, I'm looping through all these arrays here and I'm just taking what's in the at index one, the second position here, and whatever's in that position, I am pushing, adding it in to this empty array I created up here. And so when I run the program, this is what I end up with. So now I'm down to one array with all the values that are in that second position. But as you can see, I've got some unwanted values in here, negative two, negative five, and some unwanted uh, character values. So I've got to get rid of those. And so here I decided to create another array consisting of like unwanted character values. And so down here, I created another array, which I named my second clean array. So hopefully this time, when I'm all done, it'll be a lot more cleaner. So what I did here, once again, for loop, and then this time I made sure that I put in another condition where it is not equal to any of those values in this array up here. And if it meets these two criteria of being greater than or equal to zero or not being in this unwanted char array, then I would push a value into this uh, second clean array. And when it print, uh, when I run the program, this is what comes out. So as you can see, now I can work on trying to find an average value. So how I did that is I just came down here. I first created a variable called total loans and I set it to equal to zero. And then I did a for loop. And then what I did here is I'm iterating through these values and I'm adding each value to the total loan amount. And then when I run the program, this is the total loan amount I'm getting. And so now I want to find the average. Well, I just come down here and I create another variable and I call it average loan debt. And so all I'm doing now is I'm dividing the total loan variable by the length of the clean array. And so I believe that happens to be uh, 12. So yeah, so very straightforward. And so that's how I came up with the average student loan debt is 66000 $83. So that's how I went from this object up here to coming up with an average value down here. So let me know what you guys think. But yeah, this is pretty much what I've been doing, just having to self-teach myself, working with objects. And yeah, you know, once I get more advanced, I might even come up with a more advanced project. And that is something that I would actually upload to my GitHub. I don't think this is something I could really upload to my GitHub. I would probably want to actually do something to where I'm like extracting an actual data set off the internet that's got a, that involves doing some cleaning, extracting from a file, and then like doing this entire process. That's something I would upload to my GitHub. But something like this, this is like good for video purposes. But as you can see, yeah, I'm pretty much got all, I got all this knowledge pretty much just simply watching YouTube videos and then I just apply to it and then it's like applying logic and like what can I do with the different uh, functions I know I know about and just applying different functions and just trying to come up with the goal. It's like problem solving and there's obviously probably multiple ways you can come up with this answer right here. Some ways are going to be much more efficient than others and like I said, for any of you experienced coders out there who have been doing this a while, let me know, you know how many lines of code you were able to get this down to because I'm sure, I'm pretty certain that this could probably be done in like maybe three or four lines of code. I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it can be done or it, I mean, it's or maybe even less. Maybe there's people out there who can do it in like only one to two lines of code. So I'd definitely like to learn because that's, what I'm trying to do, gain those skills so I can find myself some awesome employment, guys. So, 
yep, I'm keeping on, I'm keeping on. So, yep, good old Friday night doing some JavaScript. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will be back with more. Peace.